Good day, I'm Carleen Brown-Thompson and this is your JIS News for Monday, June 17. Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller says government is committed to using the expertise of the Jamaican diaspora to strengthen its growth agenda. The Prime Minister was addressing Sunday's opening ceremony of the 5th Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference in Montego Bay. Andrea Chisholm has more. As the government continues to embark on measures to grow the economy, the Prime Minister is calling on the diaspora to join in the mission by investing in Jamaica. Investment opportunities exist in a number of areas including sports, tourism, healthcare, technology and education. The Prime Minister says the growth agenda is incomplete without active participation from the diaspora. We are resolutely committed to implementing the policies and programs necessary to facilitate increasing levels of inclusiveness and involvement to make Jamaica diaspora investments, business, and humanitarian activities seamless and successful. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister has directed that an interministerial committee on diaspora affairs be established so that there is first-hand knowledge of plans by the Jamaican diaspora as well as issues affecting them. Two policies will assist in formulating the framework to put plans into action, the diaspora policy and the international development and migration policy. Now the theme for this year's staging of the Diaspora Conference is A Nation on a Mission, Jamaica Diaspora Partnership for Development. The aim therefore is to deepen relations to place Jamaica firmly on that path to economic prosperity. Reporting from Montego Bay, I'm Andrea Chisholm for JIS News. Meanwhile, government will be ensuring that the Jamaica Diaspora Conference is not just a talk shop. State Minister for Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Arnaldo Brown, says the institutional support is already in place and steps will be taken to implement suggestions. Including an implementation process to ensure that the recommendations and decisions of the conference are effectively implemented. For this purpose, we propose to establish the Diaspora Implementation Council post-conference. The Agriculture Ministry says its push to increase production means that within the next three years, the importation of Irish potato will be a thing of the past. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Donovan Stanbury, says 80 to 85 percent of the Irish potatoes we consume is grown locally. And the Ministry is working to sustain and surpass those production levels. We are putting in place the necessary policy and support systems to ensure that within the next two to three years, we can stop importing table Irish potato altogether. Mr. Stanbury was addressing the official launch of the Denby Agricultural Industrial and Food Show recently. A draft national policy on blood transfusion and protocols for blood collection is currently being prepared for submission to Cabinet. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson made that announcement as he addressed the official launch of World Blood Donor Day 2013 at Emancipation Park in Kingston Friday. The policy is part of a national strategy to ensure access to safe and reliable blood supply and to achieve 100% voluntary blood donation. In collaboration with POW, a five-year strategic plan has been developed and will be implemented immediately. This plan hinges on voluntary blood donation as the critical pillar that will ensure sufficiency, quality, access and equity. And finally, Prime Minister Portia Simpson-Miller has once again called for women to advance their roles as transformative leaders. Information Minister Senator Sandria Faulkner delivered that message on behalf of the Prime Minister at a recent public lecture. She said it was time for women to embrace their roles as leaders in all spheres of life. Harnessing and unleashing the full transformative potential of our women will require that women play a more integral role in mentoring a new generation of women leaders. We have a responsibility to also activate fields of support and establish strategic cooperative partnerships which can remove the remaining barriers. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Carleen Brown-Thompson. Thanks for watching.